speaking of the practical stuff and just the obvious stuff, and, and you didn't know I was going to ask you this or anything, and it's probably not something that you would just you know broadcast out there, but your 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 prayer life, practically speaking, what does that look like? Our, if you, if you wouldn't mind sharing our hours and times for somebody and, and speaking for, you know, someone that might want to be a missionary, they, they might not match you hour for hour right now. They're in, you know, with my Bible college and all this stuff, but give them something to look to, to say, Hey, he got his visa approved. He got birth certificate. He, God answers prayer. Practically speaking, what does it look like for you? Well, and, and it's a great question, really. And we struggle with this sometimes talking about things like prayer life because we don't want to be, you know, lifting ourselves up and over spiritual. Sure. And it's easier when you ask the question. It is. Sure. I have a book here from uh, Brother Van Horn. I don't know if you know, he, uh, he he came and preached at a missions conference I was in last year. And he gave me a book about fasting. And his, okay. his book on fasting, he talks, he and even, you know, in person, he was talking to me about how nobody talks about fasting anymore because they think mm -hmm. it's a secret. Now, yeah, we don't want people to, you know, see us as miserable and we're suffering and that sort of thing while we're fasting. But we do need to be passing on these things to the next generation. You know, how do you pray? How do you fast? How do you, you know, have that right relationship with God? And we don't need to be afraid to mention it. I preface all that. That being said, you know, my prayer life has not always been what it is now. So don't think that it, it, it's always been this way or anything. But I have a little corner in my office right here, practically speaking. I don't know if you can see my window seat over there. That is my that is my prayer my prayer place. That is where I get on my knees and I close my eyes and I sit there and it's kind of it's it is its own special place of prayer. And it kind of I don't know if you want to say puts me in the mood. Maybe that's it. maybe that you know sounds kind of odd, but you know it puts me in that place where. I am free of distraction. And sometimes I'll even just take a pair of headphones. You'll even see a pair of headphones sitting down there by it that don't have a wire in them. And I'll put them over my head and over my ears just so that I don't hear other things. That being said, my sons, my wife, they know that if they open the door and they see me on my knees and, you know, and pray, they don't bother me. And, and they're good about that. I have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old son and they don't bother me when I'm praying. And that's, you know, that's amazing. But that being said, in the morning, I wake up first read my Bible. I listen to audio Bible while I read my Bible and I have a specific plan. Uh, I get through um, Psalms and Proverbs every 30 days, get through the New Testament every six days, Old Testament every year. And I've got it all on my phone. So that works out nicely so I can read it and listen to it. After I finish with that comes Bible time or prayer time. And I have, um, I have prayer lists that are scribbled and scratched and, and everything else. But I have separate prayer lists. I have a prayer list for pastor friends. I have a prayer list for missionary friends. I even have my missionary friend divided up into different categories where they are in the world, you know, from our home church and different categories like that. And I have written beside them, you know, pray for Matt Gansmer and his search for a new uh, place for their church to meet. You know, it's something he had mentioned in his last letter. And, and I write down these things from their prayer letters that I want to pray for. Same thing with pastor friends. We have a pastor or a church of the week of our supporting churches that we email and let them know it's church of the week. And uh, they will often, not always, but email back and let us know something that uh, I asked them to, that they want us to pray for. Uh, this last week, brother Edwards let us know that his daughter-in-law mm -hmm. is, you know, going through some health issues and, you know, praying specifically for her. And so, I mean, you've got that scratched in and added right next to that church. And, you know, you've got all sorts of things added to us. And I've got lists. Lists are the way that you spend time in prayer without, kind of wondering where you're going to go next. Uh, I have a list for myself, things that I pray for for myself, uh, for the Lord to use me in certain areas, for the Lord to develop me in certain areas. Um, and, and it's it's as long a list as most of my other ones, you know, list of people and, and their needs, but areas where I want the Lord to work in me. And I have a list of people that I'm praying for to get saved. I have a list of people that uh, are my family members that I'm praying for, specifically my brothers and their kids and my parents and my in-laws and, you know, praying for them in specific areas. I have a long-term health issue where your wife is, you know, on that list. And I have, you know, lists of different people in, uh, in, in different ways that I pray for. I have a list, you know, of ministry needs specifically in our ministry here that we're praying for. Then to top it all off, you know, I have a list uh, on a small in a small book that has my top 10. And this is, this is what I think is just the most powerful thing. I don't know if this is the most powerful thing, but I, I really think this has helped me a lot in prayer is I've got all these other lists and I pray through them and I get through them every other day. I get through all of them, but I have the top 10 and that gets prayed for three times every day. And, you know, in serious matters go right on that list 
on the top of that list is you know my visa and there are some things on that list that that i don't want mentioned because mm -hmm. they're serious things that are you know in my life in my family's life uh people that might not want it advertised or whatnot but but those things are, are very special things and those go on my top 10 list that i hit in the morning so anyways in the morning i get through these lists and that's my main time it'll end up being normally about 30 minutes in the morning then uh in the daytime again like i mentioned when you're on facebook when you're talking to someone someone emails you someone asks you to pray take it to the lord in prayer right then go to the lord add that to your prayer list at that point and pray for it again over the next week or however long it takes but then in the evening i always take uh another you know 10 to 20 minutes uh for prayer in the evening before i go to bed and, and that's the time that i i actually take that time especially to make things right with the lord before i go to bed that's kind of uh a confession time Mm -hmm. uh, for lack of a better term, where I search my search my heart and ask the Lord to show me things during the day, uh, sin, and I want to make that right before I go to bed, before I forget it, uh, before it hinders my relationship and my prayer life as well. But that's kind of like the big picture. Maybe it's more than you asked for, but that's kind no. of what my prayer life looks like. That, that's awesome.